What's going on, guys? I'm back with another video. You can see this is not a not a dragon video, but I am gonna speak about these tortoises I have. Um, these are Sakata tortoises, or African spur thigh tortoises. These guys get very big. Um, they start off very cute and little, then they grow very big, about 250 pounds. Some subspecies get bigger. Um, they're very long to live, so if you get one of these guys, keep in mind that they're going to be here. If you keep good care of them, um, they're going to be here after you leave the earth. So please have plans for them if you decide to get some of these guys. Um, again, these are African spur thigh tortoises or sulcata tortoises. Um, the third largest species is the tortoise. Um, right now, I'm giving these guys a soak and I'm checking their their eyes and make sure all their eyes are clear and because they all eating very well but when, when I'm soaking them um, I want them to get, get, get hydrated most time they use in the bathroom I was running water on them for a little while before the video to try to get them um, all out of the way of using the bathroom so it won't be a nasty video that one's using a little bit right there I don't know if you can see it or not but um, I've got this scrub brush right here. I'm going to scrub some of the uh, poop and stuff off their back and, their, and underneath them to make sure they're all clean and stuff. And I do this, I, I do the cleaning once a week and I soak them about three times a week. Uh, you can soak them daily, some people do. It, it promotes healthy uh, shell growth. So these guys' shell growth is pretty smooth, as you can see. It's not anything, it's not pyramid or anything like that. And I'm feeding these guys mostly greens, and I'm keeping them on um, alfalfa pellets, so they can chew on the actual bedding as well. Um, I'm not doing a uh, half Missouri tortoise, but I don't, I don't want to use it. I want to just do mostly greens. Um, I think the Missouri might have a little bit too much protein, and that that affects the shell growth as well. So I'll be doing mainly greens, dark leafy greens, collard greens, mustard greens, mustard greens, kale, bok choy, and stuff like that. So. Um, spring mix. But these guys are 2022s, so they were born last year in August, I believe August 15th. They hatched out of the ground in Arizona. I did not pr produce these guys. Um, I did a trade with a buddy with some, for some dragons for these. And um, I started off with like 30. 38 or something like that. I'm down to 18, I believe. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17 babies left. Um, they, these guys will most likely be uh, at the show with me in September. Um, I'm actually debating on going to the show in Anaheim. What well, is video be up? I'm not going to speak up. This video will be up after that. Um, the day after the day of so so yeah I'm just I give them a once over I look at their eyes make sure the eyes are wide and clear you got the dirty mouth though that's from me eating the greens and then I make sure the shell is hard I have a couple, I have two of them that shell has been soft for a while and I can't get it to get hard. So I'm going to have to um, give them a higher dose of um, calcium and also take them outside. I'm actually going to start taking them all outside more. Instead of um, soaking them in here, I'm probably soaking them outside in natural sunlight so they can get some of that good UVB. Um, so yeah, just got them out. I'll give them a quick little scrub down. Make sure they clean and healthy. I'm gonna show these guys a lot. Um, I didn't produce them. I don't. I had a big female as well. I recently sold her. Uh, she wasn't that big. She was seven years old. She was probably like 15 or 20 pounds. So they grow pretty fast. These guys are only going to be a year old in August. So yeah, just give them a quick scrub down. I'm not giving them like detailed or anything like that. But I just don't want any like big messes like that on them.
I'm not applying much pressure with the brush. Just enough to knock the dirt off of them. These guys eat a lot and poop a lot, so they get dirty. They're gonna get back dirty pretty fast, but I just wanted to build up on them and just sit and cake on them. See that? It's a lot better than the So if you if you depend going to buy a tortoise, tortoise it's best to buy them in person so you can look at them and see that they're healthy for yourself. Um, number one key is to see if it's active. If it's midday, is no midday inside, and um, depending on where they're coming from, they shouldn't be asleep. The re the reason I say that is because they do get on a set schedule. So if you get one that's from New York and you live on, in California. It's, it's going to be three hours ahead on schedule, so until you get used to your new schedule at this new place, it probably is going to be sleep when you think it should be woke. So give it time to adjust to the new time zone before you think it's sick or anything like that. But any kind of light on, they should be active. Especially if you put some food in there, they smell it pretty quick and get to it. Guys, I, I got some 50% um, Red Monsters uh, still available on the website. I think this video is going to be it. Let me see. I did the genetic video yesterday, which was Saturday. Yeah, never mind. I was gonna see if you guys wanted to meet with any of the animals to try to save on shipping, uh, but this video is gonna be up too late for that, and I don't wanna mess up the schedule. So I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. But it just, they are available. Um, shipping is pretty cheap right now. Uh, if you purchase off the website, it's fifty dollars. Um, if you know what the normal going rate for shipping is and you know that's pretty cheap Ship, shipping is averaging around $65 and that's that's for like from where I'm at in Nevada to like Florida it's like $65, $70 it was $73 last time I did it California is cheaper it's pretty close it's about $40, $40. so if you're in California and you want something we can adjust the shipping for you just let me contact contact me and let me know I know most of you guys are here for the bearded dragons but I do have other animals that I have to take care of and like I said in a couple videos um, I like to film what I'm doing in most most cases um, but don't get worried I've got a lot of bearded dragon videos coming But if you're a reptile person, you're a reptile person. Um, a lot of times to start start off with something small. Like I started off with bearded dragons, now I own uh, four different species. Not for four out. Like bearded dragons, your mastics, jeweled lacertas, heliaris iguanas, um, baker eye iguana, and conspic conspicuously iguana as well. So I have a couple of different species in these tortoises. I have some Russian tortoises, um, but I, the pen that I had them in outside, I wanted to put my Egyptian ear masses in. So I sold them to make space for the Egyptian ear masses, and then I ended up selling the Egyptian ear masses, and then that's when I kept bitty dragons in the pen outside um, in that same pen. So. But yeah, just wanted to give you guys a little update on how to sell, tell if a um, tortoise is healthy or not when you're purchasing it. 
So it's better to buy in person so that you can put your hands on it. Uh, you want, you're going to be looking for clear eyes. Make sure they're wide open, not shut. Um, if they're active and moving around, even better. Uh, you want to pick them up, touch the shell. Make sure it's not soft and dented in. It should be hard, especially if they're over a year old. And like I said, I got one or two that's pretty soft. Let me see what, like this one is, I don't know if you can see it or not. It's, it's dented in. I'm going to have to up, make sure this one get more calcium and also uh, start taking them out into some natural sunlight. If you guys are purchasing, purchasing from the website, you can't pick the individual, um, but I will pick the best one. Well, it's a couple of them that's all the same, but I, I won't I won't say one that I don't th I wouldn't pick for myself. Let's say that. Look, I thought like they all use the bathroom, but you can see they're still still going at it. They might be on round two now. But yeah, they got a lot of babies, a lot of baby bearded dragons, so this is just a quick little break, show something different a little bit, some of you do like tortoises, some of you might be thinking about purchasing, purchasing, sorry, purchasing a tortoise, same thing goes for our, all of them, they should have hard shells, um, they should all have wide open eyes when they're awake. And they should be active and moving around. This the other one with the soft belly right here. Um, so it's a theory that tortoises produce so many babies that some of them are not supposed to survive. I forgot the term that they use. I can't slip in my mind right now. Uh, failure to thrive, that's what it's called. And they're, they're by, by nature, they, they do that so that some of them get picked off by predators and it allows the other ones to survive. So that's why they produce so many. Um, that's the theory anyway. It kind of makes sense if you think about it. Because if all of them survive, it wouldn't be enough, enough um, stuff to sustain them for food if they all survived all the way to adulthood. That one's easy to back there. Do you guys update on the um, bear dragon that's in the, um, uh, two bear dragons in the late box now. At first it was just the red one. Now the whiplet is in there is in a different late box. I have to build another one uh, because the red one was taking so long to lay. And I didn't want uh, the whiplet to um, lay inside her late box. Um, the female Euromastix, I took her out of that um, late box. She laid two more eggs, but she still got a couple more in her. But it wasn't warm enough inside of the late box, so I... Uh, let her let her out so I might lose a couple of eggs but I just don't want her to get any uh, respiratory infection or anything like that from being in that uh, cool cool wet environment you 
got if you guys made it this far in the video comment down below what type of reptiles you guys keep I'm interested in knowing what you guys keep as well If you're not keeping anything, what reptile would you keep if you if you could? Water getting pretty nasty. I'm pretty much done though. I think I got them all. Get a little thumbnail for you guys. <laughs> Look at that. All clear eyes. All active. And not too shy either. They were, when I first got them, they used to duck in all the time, but now they're pretty used to being handled. So they come out and greet you. Alright guys, that's enough of this video. I probably lost most of you guys, but just need to do uh, a different type of video for a second. Show the tortoises. They are available on the website. Um, if you have any questions about them, comment down below. Again, these guys were hatched out of the ground, so they're not six. Um, they hatched out in August of 2022 in Arizona. They are captive bred. So. Like I said, I'm going to get these guys dried up, come back in their enclosure, and to the next video, you guys have a good one. Peace.